This Patriot Ignite is in for data recovery. It stopped working in the middle of a user transferring files from it. It's still detected, but only shows a capacity of two megabytes when it should be showing 240 gigabytes. Let's take a closer look. So the basic biology of this SSD is a cache memory, CPU, and it's got one, two, and on the back side, three, four, BGA NAND memory chips to make the 240 gig capacity. If you have a look at the CPU, the CPU is a Fison PS3110 S10C. So this one's for SATA, SATA interface. And if we have a look in this section of the SSD here, we have our input voltage power protection we can see F1 fuse 1 we got this big nice green looking fuse and next to it is D1 a diode and they usually use diodes in line with the fuse because they can handle transient problems like voltage spikes so if you get a big voltage spike this uh, diode will be able to suck it up and protect the circuit so I've connected my SATA power connect and we'll take a look at some of these voltages so turned it on you can see the LEDs uh, turned on and you can see we've got a 5 volt import and I'm assuming down to the top of this fuse is our 5 volts again there it is so if your fuse is working correctly you should see 5 volts on both sides there we do and I'm assuming we've got a input side on this diode well, let's have a look for that so the input sides down here and I'm assuming the other side should be a ground that's where it'll send the excess current so that should be zero volts if that's shorter to ground you've got a problem if you're not getting five volts on both sides of this fuse your fuse is blown now on the top right side of this is our power management circuitry and we can see what looks to be two regulators they're going to use switching regulators on an SSD um, let's find out we got pin one up here we got three let's say 3.3 volts input and probably our 3.3 volt okay so it looks like 5 volt input might be on this side who knows without a data sheet Okay, so 5 volts and 3.3 volts. There's our coil or inductor on the other side that's going to smooth it out, so we can measure those there. Same thing here, so let's assume this is our input side. Yeah, 5 volts, so what's this one give us? 1 volt. So this one's to provide 3.3 volts, this one's to provide 1 volt, uh, probably for the CPU. So in here, I have to do a little bit of repair work. I was using a little header for the boot ROM loader mode, or safe mode, you'll hear it called. And this is a 3.3 volts digital pin that tells the CPU to put it into boot ROM loader mode. Now, I was trying to solder a jumper here and it's torn a pad off so I'm just gonna fix that up now to fix this up I'm just gonna put a bit of solder on what's left of this little contact pin and I'll just use tweezers instead of my little jumper pin headers so if I put a nice little ball of solder on what's left it'll just make it a little bit easier to use my tweezers to short it out There we go, nice little ball. So we need to use this pin to put it in boot ROM loader mode because I'm gonna test the CPU on this SSD. So if we go into our test utility for this Patriot Ignite, we can see the ID is giving. So technically it's working, but the capacity, two megabytes, that's wrong. And I believe this is a safe mode firmware. So we know it's a PS3110, we'll enter the utility for that. So we've now got all the information from this SSD, particularly when it was made, and it was made on the 16th of November, 
2015. So it's lasted about seven years. So we can see the memory is Kyo Zia. Apparently that's Toshiba. And it's a 15 nanometer MLC, multi-layer cell, multi-level cell. So the 16K, I think might be 16 kilobytes, which is the smallest unit that can be programmed for this memory. So considering this SSD is detecting with only two megabytes of capacity, I very much doubt we can access any data on it. Let's have a quick look. We'll do a sector edit and we'll go to the first sector and no, nothing's readable. So we can't read anything on this SSD, but I have solved this one before. They're quite easy for me to solve by building a new translator for the SSD. So let's do that now. I uh, can't remember where it is. Translator. Create. So what this is doing is creating a virtual translator. There's a translation between where the data is physically stored on each chip to how it is logically addressed to a computer. So we're going to build one of these virtually and we should be able to access the data after that. So now that we have the translator, let's see if we can load up the data from this SSD. Let's take a look if we can recover this data. So first thing, we do have the correct capacity now, 223 gigabytes, and let's see if we can load a file system. And it's a Windows NTFS. And bang, there is all the data. So we'll be able to save this and give it back to the customer. If you need any SSD data recovery, there's a link in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video.